Hello, welcome to the fourth episode of Implementing Exceptions with Ruby. My name is Hernan Wilkinson, I work at Ten Pines, and remember that we are doing a series of videos based on implementing a new exception model for the Ruby language. On the last video, we modified the test too to be sure that after sending the message throw, uh, the execution is stopped there. And we did that using a continuation that we created with a closure that has a return expression that, as we saw, it returns from the activation context of the current method where the closure is created. And we had some to-dos. I added a new one related to the first one that uh, we are using a class instance variable now not only to save the handler that we want to evaluate when an exception is thrown but also to set the return closure. And we know that it's not a good idea to have a class instance variable for that because that means that the whole system will have only one handler or one return closure. And we could have more than one. But we are not in a situation, uh, in a good situation to solve this design smell. I think that it's better to wait a little bit and see what happens in the next episodes and see if we can remove this smell uh, with more context. The second to do is uh, says that we should evaluate the handler only if the exception type that is thrown matches the exception type of the handler. And the third one is related to the second one, it's a consequence of the second one. So I think we should continue with the second one and see what happens. So let's go to our test and let's write a test for that second uh, to do. What we want to do is we want to verify that if the type of the exception matches the type of the handler then the handler should be evaluated. But that is exactly what we have in the second test. So that case is already being tested. We have to test the, the negative case of that one. That means that we throw an exception of a type, like this case new exception, and we want to handle exceptions of another type, like for example sub uh, new exception subclass. And if uh, and what should happen? The uh, exception handler should not be evaluated. So now we have a test where we throw an exception and we are handling exception of another type and if the uh, handler is evaluated the test should fail. But what's the result of this uh, piece of code? Well, if the exception should not be handled and the execution should stop after the flank what are we going to get as a result? Well, it's not easy to see here so what I'm going to to do is I'm going to set I'm going to send the message flank f so if the code gets here it will also fail but we will be able to see what we get as a result. Okay, let's write let's run the test. We see that it's failing because we don't have new class new exception subclass defined. So let's define it. <coughs> A subclass of new exception. Let's see what happened. And now it's failing because it's getting here when we send the message flank and that's okay because that, ex that is exactly what we want to test and that is exactly what the model is doing and we will have to change our model not to do it. So why is evaluating the exception handler? Well, you know that the problem is that here the handle is always evaluating the handler no matter the exception type. We should have some kind of verification here, so some kind of test where we could see that if an exception is kind of a class then only if that is true we have to evaluate the uh, return closure and if not we have to do something that we are not sure what right now, but we will have to do something. Okay, 
so now we have to know what is this xxx means well we know that the call handling message is sent with an exception class that is the type of the exceptions that we have that we want to handle so here we should put the class that we get as a parameter in a call in the call handling message and you know we cannot access that parameter from here so we are going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the current handler and with the return closure we're going to reference that object from a class instance variable so this is the uh, exception to handle class and now we're gonna have to write the method for this message that that gets an exception class a parameter and we're gonna save it in a class instance variable exception class bm good um, okay so now we have the exception to handle class in a class instance variable and that's the one that we want to use here so if an exception is the is uh, the type of an exception to handle class we evaluate the handler and we return the result of that handler and if not well we don't know exactly what to do now so let's put a fail so the system stops here if it gets here let's run the test okay so now we have all the tests failing and that's because is exception class is not written correctly let's run the test again okay and now we have an error because the fail is being evaluated is being sent so okay we got to a situation in our test number three where uh, there is no exception handler for the exception that we, that we are throwing and that was exactly the third to do that we had so we started trying to make the second to do and we end up being in the third one but that's okay we can change our direction so let's make the third one work uh, so right now we are getting here because there is no exception handler for that class for, for that exception so let's do something let's return handler not found just for now a string that we will have to change of course but let's say that as a result we want to have handler not found as uh, you know the string handler not found as a result of not finding a handler let's run the test and we can see that now is failing because it's getting here that is exactly the same problem we had when we wrote the second test and that's because the return handler the return closure is not being evaluated so let's do it here let's run the test and now we can see that it's working we are getting handler not found okay so we're doing a little bit better as we did before the test is working but now we have to get ready get rid of of this uh, string how we can do that well an option is to send a message for example to the class prog to self and you know give an option for for that method for that for the implementation of that message to decide what to do but a better option is to let the exception decide what to do if she doesn't have an exception handler so let's say an exception handler not found and let's do something on new exception let's implement handler not found in such a way that now it returns the string handler not found let's see what happens 
Well, we get an error because it's not handler not found. It's handle not found. No, sorry, it is handler not found. And here we are sending handle not found. Okay, let's fix that. Okay, now again is failing because of the flank and that is because we forgot here when we send the message handler not found to an exception to call the return closure that is what uh, you know TDD has as a as wonderful if you make a mistake it will show it to you as soon as you make it let's run the test again now they are running but uh, now we have the, uh, you know, the hard-coded string here. And that's not a good, you know, design decision neither. So we have to get rid of this string. How we can do it? Well, you know, if we don't have a handler for an exception, that's it. that is an exception by itself. So maybe we could signal, we could throw another exception if that happens. So let's do that. Let's throw the exception and handle exception if no handler is found. Let's create the unhandler exception and handle exception class. A subclass of new exception. And let's see what happens now. Let's run the test. Hmm, and we are getting a very weird error, stack level too deep. That means that we are getting, we are in a stack overflow. Let's see why. The only change we did is this one. So let's put a breakpoint. That's another thing that is great about TDD, and is that we can debug. So let's do, let's use the debugger. So okay, here is the handler not found uh, method where self is new ex is new is new exception so the type of the object that is receiving the message handler not found is new exception let's proceed and see what happens now the handler not found method is evaluated for an object whose type is an hundred exception so an hundred exception throws again an unhandled exception and that's why we are getting an a stack overflow message error. So we have to stop this kind of recursion and we have to do something different when an unhandled exception receives the message handler not found. What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to return by now again the string handler not found. Let's see if that works. Yes, it is working, but again getting a string, hand, hard coding a string as a result of the handler not found method in a handler exception is not a good idea. We should be able to let the user decide what to do if a handler is not found. And to do that we're gonna we're going to have uh, a strategy and in the unhandle exception class so the user can define what to do. Let's say that we have a handler not found strategy that is going to be a closure or a lambda that, that is a block that we're going to keep in a class instance variable and again we see a class instance variable handler not found strategy And then we are going to evaluate that strategy from here. We are going to forward the message handler not found to the class. And now we are going to evaluate the handler. sorry, the uh, strategy <coughs> and let's see what happened okay, now it's 
we are getting an error because handler not found is not defined in the class. That is true. I forgot to put the self here. Let's run the test. Okay, and now we are getting an error because call is being sent to nil. And that is true because we haven't defined the handler not found strategy in our test. But let's do something. Let's uh, define a default handler not found strategy. <coughs> so the test passes. Let's use a default handler not found strategy and let's make that default handler not found strategy to exit the system I don't know with minus one as an error code let's see what happens mm, okay the what is going what's going on here uh, undefined local variable okay that's because the name doesn't match it doesn't match default handler not found I forgot the found here strategy okay so now it's failing because it's exiting the execution of the test that of the test that means that the default handler not found strategy is being evaluated I'm sorry, this should return uh, a block. Okay, now it's correct. And now let's define what we want to have in this test as a handler not found strategy. And for now, we want to have a lambda. that is going to return the string handler not found. Let's see if the test works. If not working, and that's because I selected the wrong message sent, handler not found strategy, now the test works. Okay, so we have our default handler not found, our handler not found strategy to return the string Handler not found. That is what. That's what we are expecting as a result of executing this test, and uh, we solve then the to do number three. Let's put it in done. And okay, we are done for this episode. Then what we did is uh, we created the unhandled exception class to signal that an exception was not handled, and we avoid hard coding what to do when an exception is not handled. Beside other benefits, that is the possibility to configure what to do, it allows us to test exactly what we should, uh, that the, uh, hand, the exception is not being handled. From the TDD point of view, we started with a to do and we end up doing another thing, another to do, and that's okay, that, that is something that happens all the time, and we should be, you know, flexible and pragmatic enough to change our our uh, you know the the course of what we're doing and do what we need to solve a problem i hope you like this fourth episode and i hope to see you in the next one